Hello, I'm Dr Melanie Windridge, Plasma Physicist, Communications Consultant at Tokamak Energy and UK Director of the Fusion Industry Association. It's Friday the 22nd of May 2020 and this is your Fusion News Update. Stories today include 1. Radio wave breakthrough helps stabilise fusion reactions. 2. Can Massachusetts launch the fusion revolution? 3. Fusion energy technology for a greener and more sustainable energy mix. 4. HB11, the Australian startup pursuing a new form of fusion. And we've got a few extras for you as well. 1. Radio wave breakthrough helps stabilise fusion plasmas. There are a few stories on this from various outlets. Scientists from Princeton University and Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory have used radio frequency waves and temperature to stabilize the volatile plasma inside fusion reactors like tokamaks and stellarators. Building on previous research, the scientists fired radio waves into the plasma to prevent the growth of magnetic islands. These are a bit like bubbles in the magnetic field structure. If they get too big, they can cause a disruption, which is a sudden release of energy from the plasma that shuts down the fusion reactions. This work, which is based on a simplified analytical model, focuses on the use of radio frequency RF waves to heat the islands and drive electric current that causes them to shrink and disappear. The new paper shows how to control the power and aiming of the waves to make optimal use of the RF current condensation effect. The scientists say they're excited about the possibilities for new control schemes. 2. Can Massachusetts launch the fusion revolution? This is an opinion piece around MIT spin-out Commonwealth Fusion Systems, but talking more broadly about fusion entrepreneurship. As well as discussing CFS, the article states that they have competitors not just in the US, but in other countries including Canada, England and Australia. The Fusion Industry Association even gets a mention. The article talks about government support, including President Trump's intention to cut the fusion budget, while other countries are increasing theirs. In October, the United Kingdom announced its intention to spend significantly more money to design a fusion power plant over the next four years. Governments in Germany, elsewhere in the EU, Japan, South Korea and Russia all provide resources for the development of fusion energy. Perhaps the most significant government investments are occurring in China, which this year will open an advanced fusion reactor. Three. Fusion energy technology for a greener and more sustainable energy mix. This is a general article about ITER, but including the news that a couple of weeks ago they received the large superconducting toroidal field magnet at the site in Cadarache, France. This is a massive component, 17 meters high and weighing 310 tons. It is the first magnet delivered to ITER and the biggest component so far handed over by Europe. Work has been going on busily at ETA and you can find more news and photos on their website. 4. HB11, the Australian startup pursuing a new form of fusion. This is an interview with Dr Warren McKenzie of HB11, a recent spin-out from the University of New South Wales in Australia. HB11 has a potentially revolutionary way of approaching the nuclear fusion race, using a new breed of high-power laser to initiate hydrogen boron fusion reactions. The new lasers are called chirped pulse amplification lasers and were the subject of the 2018 Nobel Prize in Physics. The HB11 team is using the laser to rapidly accelerate hydrogen through a boron fuel, creating a fusion event when they hit each other. They are still very much in the research phase, doing a lot of computational modelling, but they expect to face fewer scientific challenges than other groups focused on thermal fusion, so they believe they can reach the goal of net energy gain sooner. Also on this subject, Asia Times have an article on Professor Heinrich Horror, who proposed the new type of laser fusion reactor. This is part six of the series we shared last time. And as a bonus, Federal Drive did a 10 minute interview with Scott Hsu, program director of ARPA-E, talking about the growing fusion industry and the ARPA-E grant program. I'll put a link below so you can have a listen. So that's all for Fusion News this week. Please subscribe to our channel for more fusion news and check out the links below if you need further information. Have a lovely weekend.